In this video, we're going to continue on with our writing chemical equations topic, and we're going to cover three small areas of the topic. We're going to look at writing the formula for covalent compounds. We're going to look at counting the number of atoms within a formula, and we're going to look at word equations. So we're going to take a very brief look at writing the formula of covalent compounds, and this is page 10 of your notes. So up to now, we have been looking at writing the formula of ionic compounds. And thinking back to our bonding topic, ionic compounds contain a metal and a non-metal. And for an example of that, we could think of the likes of magnesium chloride. And we have spent a bit of time over the past couple of weeks looking at how we do this. We would start with magnesium, um, which is in group two, so it has a valency of two. The chloride part is from chlorine and it has a valency of one because it's in group seven. We did our swap and drop and that gave us MgCl2. Ionic compounds can also be the likes of a metal and a molecular ion. So for this, we might think of calcium hydroxide, for example. So if we started with calcium, it's Ca, that's our metal, and it's in group two, so it has a valency of two. Hydroxide is OH minus, so we would write OH, and then the valency is 1 because it has a charge of minus. We're going to be swapping a number down, so we need brackets, swap and drop, and you would get CA brackets OH2. So that swap and drop method has been for our, our ionic compounds. But with covalent compounds, it's a little bit different. Often we get the formula of the substance of the compound from its name and we don't need to do swap and drop. So let's have a look at this section on page 10 of your notes. So again, a reminder, covalent compounds, but thinking back to your bonding topic, covalent compounds are when we have non-metal atoms bonded to each other. So there won't be any metal atoms involved in these compounds. So there are two general points to make about the formula of covalent compounds. One is that there are some covalents that you should just learn the formula of because you can't really work out the formula from its name. So that would be the likes of water. Water is a covalent compound because it contains hydrogen and oxygen, both of which are non-metals. And the formula of water, which hopefully you know, is H2O. Then you've got the likes of methane, and we met that in our bonding topic as well. That was one of our covalent bonding diagrams that we had to learn, and we'll come back to that in our Form 5 chemistry, organic chemistry. Um, but it has the formula CH4. It has carbon and hydrogen in it. Um, again, methane, there's no way really of telling the formula of that from the name. Well, at least until we look at organic chemistry anyway. So that's a formula you should learn. Carbon dioxide, we can tell that from the name, um, which we'll come back to in a second. Um, but that's one you should be familiar with as C. O2. The other one that you might want to write in is the likes of ammonia. And again, we met that in our bonding topic. It was one of our covalent bonding diagram examples. And it has the formula NH3. And again, you can't tell that from its name. And so that's one that you should learn. But there are other covalent compounds where you can often tell the number of atoms present and therefore the formula from the name. And it's because these come with little prefixes, little words at the start of the name that tell us how many atoms that we have. So mono means one. Mono means one atom. Um, think of a monobrow as um, uh, an eyebrow that essentially uh, there's just one of. In other words, your two eyebrows meet in the middle and um, you have that little bit of eyebrow across the middle. So that's what a monobrow means, one um, eyebrow essentially. Um, then we've got the little prefix di, which means two, tri, which means three, and tetra, which means four. So if you have this little prefix in front of the name of an element, then we know that's how many atoms of that element we have. So let's look at the likes of carbon dioxide. So carbon, there's no prefix in front of it. So we can uh, just assume that there's one of those. So I just write down the symbol for that element, which is C. But then with our um, oxygen, we can see that it's dioxide. And that dye tells us, if we go back to here, 
Di means two. So that means there's two oxygens. The number of an atom comes after the atom um, and it's a little subscript number. Um, in other words, it's written at the bottom. So it's written in the bottom right hand corner. So the formula of carbon dioxide is CO2 because there's just one carbon and dioxide literally means two oxygens. Let's look, have a look at another example. Here we have got sulfur trioxide. Well, there's no prefix in front of the sulfur, so we can just assume there's one. Um, so we just give that the symbol capital S. Then it's trioxide, and look at your prefixes. Tri means three, so it's going to be SO3. Let's have a look at the next one. It is nitrogen monoxide. Nitrogen, there's no prefix in front of, so we can just assume there's one. And then monoxide means one oxygen. Um, so it's NO. Then the, our last example here, we've got dinitrogen tetroxide. So dinitrogen, that's suggesting that there's two nitrogen. So I would write N2. Tetroxide, then if we look at our prefixes, T-E-T-R -E um, is our tetra. Um, we just take the A away because it's not tetraoxide. Um, but that means four. So there's going to be four oxygen. So the formula is N2O4. What I've done is I've written a few more examples on the screen. I'd like you to write these in in your notes in the gap that, that that's there. Um, and I'd like you to pause the video and try and write the formula of these examples. So sulfur dioxide, carbon tetrachloride, phosphorus trichloride and arsenic tribromide. So pause the video now. Give those a go and, um, and then play the video again to check your answers. Okay, so you should have had a go at those yourself by now. And if not, pause the video, finish those off and then you can check them. So sulfur dioxide should be SO2. No prefix in front of the sulfur, so we can just assume there's one of them. But dioxide means two oxygens. Then we've got carbon tetrachloride. And that should be CCl4 um, because tetra means four chlorines. Phosphorus trichloride should be PCl3, P for phosphorus, and three chlorines because of the trichloride. And then finally, arsenic tribromide should be ASBr3. So AS for arsenic and Br3 for the three bromines. We can tell from tribromide. So the real with covalent compounds are some you just need to know because um, their names are quite unique and we can't tell anything from the name in terms of the formula, like water, methane and ammonia. Um, but others we can get from the little prefixes in front of the name. So you don't need to do swap and drop with these. You get the formula from the name. Let's continue on with the rest of page 10. And we're going to have a look now at counting up the number of atoms within a formula. So you may be asked to calculate the total number of atoms in a molecule or the number of atoms of a specific element. And this is simply just a case of counting up all the atoms. But there's a few or a couple of rules that you need to be familiar with in terms of what the numbers represent with a formula. Um, so a small subscript number only applies to the element before. It. So, for example, if we had something like CH4, that little number four means four hydrogen atoms, but there's only one carbon atom. If there's no number after an element or its symbol, um, then you can assume there's only one of them. And you can write that into your notes if you'd like to. The second thing to be aware of is brackets and brackets you need to be really careful with. Brackets show that everything inside the brackets is multiplied by the number outside the bracket. And that is really, really important when you're counting up um, when you're counting up the number of atoms. Quite often people will add on the numbers inside and outside the brackets, but you must remember to multiply. So if we have, for example, calcium hydroxide here. If we take it element by element, we've got um, calcium and there's no number after it. Um, so we can assume there's just one of them. And this little two um, only applies to what's inside the bracket. So it doesn't apply to the calcium as well. If we then look at the oxygen, well, there's one inside the brackets multiplied by two is two. And um, so that's two oxygens. And then we have got um, our hydrogen 
So there's one in the bracket multiplied by two is two. Um, so you're really thinking this formula is actually a calcium ion. We'll not worry about the charges. Um, and then two hydroxide ions. So we have OH and OH. So you can see even from the way we've written it, we've got one calcium and two oxygens and two hydrogens. Let's look at one more example of the use of brackets just to show this multiplication. That's something I want you to be really careful with when you're doing these examples on uh, this page and the next page. Um, so you may want to write this into your notes. It could be helpful. Um, so if we look at, uh, take each element in turn again. So this is aluminium sulfate. So if we look first of all at the number of aluminiums, well, it's Al2. So that little two applies to the element before it. So we know there's two aluminium atoms. If we look at the sulfurs, what I would always do is ask myself how many are inside the brackets and then multiply the num by the number outside the brackets. So we have got one in the brackets because remember that four only applies to the oxygen. And if you're wondering, well, is that one element or is it two? If there's a capital letter, then it's the start of a new element. So we've got capital S, capital O. So we know that those are two separate elements. Um, if it was capital S, small o, I don't think there is an element um, that has that symbol. Um, but that would mean if it's uppercase and lowercase together, that would be uh, one element just. Um, so yes, let's have a wee look here. Um, so we've got one sulfur inside the bracket but multiplied by three you always must multiply everything in the brackets by what's outside the brackets so that's one times three which is three sulfur atoms and then finally let's have a look at our oxygen atoms this one we need to be really careful about we've got four inside the brackets and then we multiply by three so that's four times by three which is twelve the most common mistake people make is to just add those on. They would just do four plus three, um, which would be seven, but that is completely wrong. And the reason why we need to be careful about this is what we're moving towards ultimately is to be able to write a balanced symbol equation. Um, and in order to do that, we need to count up how many atoms we have and make sure we have the same number on either side of the equation. Um, so you've got to make sure you're um, confident in doing this in calculating the number of atoms within a formula. So what I'd like you to do now is to try the examples on page 10 and 11. So do, um, I'll do the first one with you and then I want you to pause and do the examples on page 11. Um, so the first few are kind of given to you in a structured way and um, then you'll have to do more and more as you go along. Um, so you're looking at the formula, you're counting up how many atoms, how many of each type of atom do I have? And then what's my total number of atoms? Because these types of questions, um, they can be asked, they're just one mark, but they might say, how many sulfur atoms are in this formula? Or they might say, how many atoms are there in this formula? And then you're thinking about the different atoms you have and adding them up. So no brackets here, um, so we don't need to be careful about that, but we just need to be careful about our symbols um, and then how many we have of each. So what I would always do, if you're not given the elements, I would make a list of your elements, first of all, so you can see that you've got hydrogen, you've got sulfur and you've got oxygen. Remember, a capital letter is the start of a new element. So let's have a look at this formula. It's H2SO4. So how many hydrogens do we have? Well, remember the number after the symbol tells us how many we have. So it's H2, so that means two hydrogen atoms. Or think about it, the number applies to the element before. Then we've got S, there's no number after it, so that just means there's one of them. And then um, O4, which means four oxygen atoms. So if we were working out how many atoms we have in total, we would be doing two plus one plus four, which is seven. So if you were asked in the exam, how many atoms are there in this formula? You would just simply do two plus one plus four is seven. So I'd like you to turn over to page 11 and try the examples here. Um, so pause the video, try them yourself and then play the video again when you're finished. Um, and just a final warning to be careful with the brackets. So um, again, the first example you're given here on page 11, it has split it up into the different elements. So it says you've got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Um, just be careful because your, your element, your symbol may appear again. So you can see carbon appears three times here. So you're you're totaling those up, you're adding up your number of elements there. Then from the next example, which is aluminium nitrate, you can see there's brackets introduced, but you're also not told um, the elements that are in this. 
So you will need to write that as well. I want to know how many atoms there are in total, but also how many of each particular element. Um, and just to say that is the symbol. It's not clear, very clear with the font, but that's AL, aluminium. It's not AI. So pause the video now, give that a go and press play again when you're finished. So you should be finished those examples by now um, and if you're not, pause the video again until you're finished. Um, so let me take you through these. Make sure that you've got these correct in your notes. Okay, so um, if we look at the first example and we think about our first element, which is carbon, we've got one here plus one here plus one here. So that's three carbon atoms. With our hydrogen, we've got three here plus two here plus two here plus one which gives you eight hydrogen atoms. Then our oxygen, we've only got one of them here. Um, so that's one. Your total number of atoms are then three plus eight plus one. And that gives you a total of 12 atoms within that formula. The next example is aluminium nitrate. So if we take our first element, we've got aluminium. There's no number after it. So we can see we've got one aluminium atom. Next element is nitrogen. You can see we've got one inside the bracket, but we need to multiply by that by three. So we've got three nitrogen atoms. Then we look at our oxygen. We've got three inside the brackets, multiplied by three. So that gives us a total of nine oxygen atoms. Be careful that you didn't write six. It's not three plus three. It's three multiplied by three. And that's really because we've got one aluminium ion. It would actually be Al3+, but we'll not worry about the charges um, so as not to confuse things. But then we've got three nitrate ions. Um, so you can see from here, we've got three plus three plus three oxygens, which gives us nine. Um, so total number of atoms within this formula is one plus three plus nine, which gives us a total of 13 atoms. Okay, the next one, let's look a little bit quicker at um, copper. We've just got one. There's no number after it. Hydrogen, you've got one in the brackets multiplied by two, which is two. Carbon, one times two is two. And then oxygen, we have three multiplied by two, which is six oxygen atoms. So our total number of atoms is one plus two plus two plus six, which is equal to 11. Next example, no brackets here. Um, so it's just looking at the numbers and the particular elements. So our first um, element is sodium. And we can see from our number here that we have two sodium atoms. Um, I just have, haven't written the word atoms, but you should. Um, sulfur, we've got two sulfur atoms and oxygen, we have three. So total number of atoms is two plus two plus three, which is equal to seven atoms. Next example, first element is carbon. We've got one here, but we've also got one here. So that's a total of two carbon atoms. Hydrogen, you've got three here plus one here, which is four. And oxygens, you've got two. Um, that's written a little, you might expect it to be, you know, like C2H4O2, and that would be correct as well. But um, this is what we call an organic molecule. And we can see sometimes the formula, we'll see this in form five. Sometimes the formula is written in such a way that it uh, demonstrates the structure of the molecule as well. But we'll come back to that at a later stage. So total number of atoms here, two plus four plus two, which gives us eight atoms. And then our last example here we've got brackets at the start of the formula. So nitrogen, we've got one multiplied by two, which is two nitrogen atoms. Hydrogen, we've got four multiplied by two, which is eight hydrogen atoms. One carbon, three oxygen. So that's two plus eight plus one plus three, which gives us 14 atoms in total. And um, so hopefully that seems OK. If you want more examples, uh, just go back to pages eight and nine of your booklet and have a look at the formulas that you wrote of your ionic compounds, some with brackets and some without. And you can have a practice at um, calculating the total number of atoms. And this will be important when we look later on in the week at balancing equations. So the last thing we're going to touch upon really briefly in this video is the idea of word equations. Um, and we're just introducing these at this stage. Um, and this is on page 12 of your notes. 
So when a chemical reaction takes place, reactants are used up and new substances called products are formed. So the reactants are the chemicals that react together and the products are what we make as a result of a reaction. And we can use word equations to represent those chemical reactants. Um, and really what I want you to take away from this page are two key terms. Um, that term reactants and all you need to really remember is that reactants, they're the things that react together and they appear on the left hand side, sometimes abbreviated to LHS of the equation. And what we form in a reaction is called uh, the products and they appear on the right hand side of the equation. And a word equation is separated by the reactants and products are separated by plus signs and arrows. And at this stage, all I really want you to be able to do is identify what are the reactants, what are the products in an equation, um, and uh, be able to write those down from a given word equation. You will need to be able to write word equations for all of the reactions covered in this module and in your Form 5 module as well. So it's an important skill to have. Of, but we'll build that up as we have a look at more some more specific reactions throughout the course. So let's have a look at this word equation here. Um, so we're told um, this is the reaction of magnesium reacting with oxygen, so just burning magnesium. Um, so you'll see it's written as magnesium plus oxygen. So that means magnesium is reacting with oxygen. Then an arrow, and it's really important that you always use an arrow in a word equation and not an equal sign. And the reason why that is, is because the arrow, it can be translated as reacts together to give. So the arrow means reacts together to give. The reason why that's not the same as an equal sign is because if we look at this reaction, magnesium and oxygen are not equal to magnesium oxide. Magnesium is a shiny grey metal, oxygen is a colourless gas, and magnesium oxide is a white powder. So they're not equal to each other, they're not the same thing. Um, what that arrow means is react together to give. Um, so just be really careful about that. Um, and then back to our equation, that's reacting together to give magnesium oxide. And in this case, we only have one product. So what we would say is that magnesium oxide is our product and our two reactants are magnesium and oxygen. Let's look at another reaction. So here we have um, sodium reacting with water to give sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. This is a reaction that we'll look at um, when we return to our periodic table topic um, to look at the reaction of group one metals with water. You also did this in your form three chemistry. So you should actually be familiar with this word equation. But really what I all I want you to do at this stage is to be able to identify from a word equation, what are your reactants, what are reacting together and what are your products? So if we look at our um, word equation, it's the simple rule that whatever's on the left is your reactant, whatever's on the right are your products. Um, so even you could write that underneath. So reactants are your left hand side. So what are reactants in this reaction? Well, we can see that we have sodium reacting with water. So our reactants are sodium and water. What are our products? Well, our products are on the right hand side of the equation, the right hand side of the arrow. Um, so you can maybe write that underneath products are right hand side. So in this case, our products are sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. I'd like you to try this for the last example. So simply identify what are the reactants in the reaction between chlorine and sodium iodide and what are your products. Um, pause the video, write those down and then just play the video um, to check those and just as we wrap up this section of the topic. So you should have found your reactants to be the things on the left hand side of the equation. So that's chlorine and sodium iodide. And your products are on the right hand side of the equation. So that is sodium chloride and iodine in this, um, in this situation, this equation. So you will be able to uh, soon write some word equations to represent reactions that we study within this um, topic. But what we want to do um, from these word equations is then use our work on formula to convert these into balanced symbol equations. So where we're going to go from here is um, we're going to learn how to balance an equation. First of all, that will be our next lesson and then put that all together to write a balanced symbol equation. And we'll come back to that in our next lesson. Thank you.